Welcome back to the Laravel Podcast Season 5, where every single episode is going to be about a particular package. And today we're going to talk about yet another of the first party Laravel packages called Cashier. I've got Dries Fintz from Laravel with me. So I know that hey, I know what you do and I know your kind of background, but because a lot of people haven't actually got the chance to meet you before, can you real quick just tell us a little bit about yourself, about your current role at Laravel, but also kind of your history leading it to where you work? I work at the Laravel uh, core team uh, directly, and I mostly maintain the open source packages uh, at Laravel. I got involved in 2018 when Taylor was looking for someone who could help him out with maintaining the open source side of things at Laravel. And I was um, right at the time I was in between uh, a job, so it was a perfect time for me to reach out to him to um, to apply for that position, which I'm very grateful that I did. Very grateful that I got hired uh, as well. It was a great fit because uh, I already really enjoyed helping out on the issue trackers um, uh, beforehand on that. I've been involved, mm -hmm. I think, since 2012, at the end uh, of 2012 already. So it was great to like finally like make my job from... Uh, um, a hobby, yeah. Uh, and I was going to say, you've been around since since almost the very beginning. Um, and right now, you also have another kind of well-known package, or well-known um, part of the Laravel ecosystem that you're re responsible for, which is one of the big websites. Can you just talk a little bit about Laravel I.O. and your kind of responsibilities there, and also just kind of like what, what the, the, the tool is? I know that's not what we're talking about today, but I just figured I'd give you a chance to kind of intro it real quick. Yeah, for sure. Um, Laravel of the O is uh, the community portal of the Lar uh, Laravel community. And uh, it first started out as a site built by Sean McCool. I think it was very early 2012 already that he started out with it. And it started out like a forum and afterwards it evolved also into article sharing and, and such. Just like to get a point in place for the Laravel community to come and ask questions if they needed anything, uh, any help. Mm -hmm. It was before the Laracast uh, discussion forum, so all already was around. Um, and then uh, after a while, Sean McCool, uh, went on to, to do other things and he was looking around for someone to take over. And I was at a time when I didn't really have that much on hand. So I thought like, why not? Uh, and it was a fully open source project. So the source code is out there for everyone to see, to follow along. And ever since we've been like updating it, improving it, like giving it a new layout, mm -hmm. new UI, Joe Dixon has stepped in and helped me out a lot with maintaining it. And it's, I'm very happy with to, to see how it's grown and also looking real forward. So if somebody to wanted to check it out, they should definitely go to Laravel.io. Yeah. But if they wanted to know more about what you're doing there in the future, is there a good place to talk? Is there, are there any forums where you talk about the future or do you talk about it in GitHub or where are kind of discussions about next steps with Laravel.io going on? Mostly it's uh, Joe and me talking on Telegram uh, about uh, what, yeah. a what kind of future we see for the platform. But uh, there's also an issue tracker on the repository, which has a lot of open issues of some ideas that we have for the, for okay. the forum in the future. So that's something that you can check out and maybe open up a feature request if I you want it. to like suggest something uh, to us. Sorry. Yeah. So Let's get on to the actual topic for today. Thanks for sharing all of that. We know we're talking about Cashier. So before we talk about anything else about Cashier, can you just tell us high level, what's the elevator pitch for Cashier? What does it do? Who is it for? What's the main job that it solves? Well, Laravel Cashier is a package that tries to make it as seamless as possible to make the integration between Stripe or Paddle and Laravel itself. It's mainly focused on subscription-based billing, um, although it also handles one-off uh, charges and separate yep. uh, purchases. It's a great elevator itself. pitch. Yeah, so that's basically the gist. Normally, yeah. we jump straight at to how you install it and key setup steps, but I'm actually really curious for us to talk a little bit about the history. Could you Can you talk to me about kind of like what you know of where it came from and how it's evolved over the years and everything? Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know like the exact years, but I think Cashier has yeah. been around for a very long time. It's one of mm -hmm. the oldest packages, uh, the Cashier Stripe yeah. one that is, because Cashier Paddle is uh, pretty new, actually. And uh, Taylor originally wrote it to have a way to integrate with Stripe uh, as easily as possible and to make subscription-based billing yeah. not that much of a pain anymore for people who wanted to, to get started with that. And uh, originally, Cashier was 
just a PHP uh, uh, package uh, that integrated with Laravel and Stripe uh, to get that set up uh, more easily. But eventually, uh, around the time mm -hmm. that Forge came out, and I think it was after Forge uh, came out, Taylor also started to look into like, how I, how can I help uh, get people set up with a SaaS subscription app as uh, easy as possible? Mm -hmm. And that's uh, how Spark originally originated. And Spark is built uh, on top of Kashir uh, Stripe. So you have these two different kind mm -hmm. of things who integrate uh, very well with each other. The uh, one part is open source, which is like the base foundations uh, of everything. And Spark is like the, the UI, everything built yeah. uh, uh, in front of um, you beforehand. So yeah. I, again, I normally don't ask this, but if somebody's never seen Cashier before, can you kind of give me an example of what some of the most common methods mm -hmm. or workflows or things that you would do? So just because like someone could say, okay, I understand Stripe, but like what what APIs is it exposing to me or what types of things does it allow me to do relatively easily that would normally have been more code? So you said subscriptions, kind of what kind of stuff does it let me do in a Laravel app that's easier than if I was writing the, the subscription code myself? Yeah, uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we have two flavors, of course, Stripe and Paddle. Both are very different in the way how they tackle um, okay. SaaS, uh, um, uh, SaaS companies, uh, SaaS applications, I mean, like how the way they have different kind of ways on how to uh, solve problems. Stripe is more focused on a very extensive um, mm. all around um, solution for subscription based billing. It has a lot of features, a lot of things you can do to integrate. But in the end, you are the one responsible for your customers and how to handle their uh, money their, uh, and refunds and whatnot. Uh, Pedal okay. is more like a man in the middle approach. So they take the merchant of records um, solution, which basically in the end means that your customers are Pedal's cu customers and they uh, handle everything around taxes uh, and everything. So they are more of like uh, a very locked in uh, solution mm -hmm. while Stripe gives you more, a little bit more freedom. There are different trade-offs and the way the packages integrate with them is uh, for the Stripe um, one, the sheer Stripe uh, package integrates directly with the Stripe SDK. So directly with their APIs and their API is a very CRUD like yeah. API. So you do create, read, update, uh, delete uh, uh, operations on them. And you still need to like do some okay. things in uh, specific ways with uh, those kind of APIs. So, in, uh, so you have mm -hmm. a kind of logic that you need to follow in certain situations to, to subscribe uh, for a new subscription or to move onwards to a new subscription to cancel uh, something. And what Kashir basically mm -hmm. gives you is like a, a layer on top of all that, that makes those operations as easily as possible. So you basically play, place a trade mm -hmm. on a billable model, like a user, for example, which makes that user mm -hmm. a customer, uh, a potential customer uh, for your business. And that user starts off with uh, starting a new subscription with yeah. a fluent API from the model itself. It's a very uh, locked in solution into Laravel, of course, because yeah. all of our packages are lar very Laravel focused. And um, that's why it's mainly right. works with uh, eloquent models and not uh, with a, a separate class. For Paddle, it's uh, basically the same thing. You also start with a subscription, uh, with a trait that you place on a billable model. And uh, while you have less features for Paddle, it still gives you like a very nice solution of like a layer on top of the Paddle um, uh, APIs and the Paddle uh, widgets that's, okay. that's initiated um, with the starting if someone, subscription. And this, if, yeah. if this is an unfair question to ask, that's fine. Um, let me know. If someone were to be trying to decide today about Stripe versus Paddle, you will mention about how the fact that Paddle is a much more all-in-one all but locked-in solution, whereas Stripe is a little bit more like you're there's it's mm -hmm. managing less for you but then you probably also have to do more of the work yourself <clears throat> is there like one or two because i remember people have talked about vat and stuff like that and taxes with paddle is there one where you say if you need x use paddle if you need y use stripe or is it not quite as simple as that okay 
I guess it's not quite as simple as that indeed. Like um, from what I've learned from people using the package or Spark for that matter, is that um, there's Got very it. lots of opinions about which one is better or which one just works better for your, your use case. I guess Paddle works a little bit better at this point in terms of taxes because they really take over the entire business part of that. You don't need to handle anything about taxes anymore yourself. But uh, Stripe is like doing their fair share okay. amount uh, lately to catch up a little bit with that. And they have some real great new products around uh, tax handling uh, for you. But uh, in the end, you still need okay. to do the tax filing yourself on a Stripe, uh, Stripe's uh, account. But um, it's not just taxes, of course, it's like lots of different things. Uh, Stripe has a fast amount of a range of different kind of products that you can use for your business, uh, depending on what you need. They also yeah. have Stripe Connect, which is very neat to give uh, your billable users the opportunity to handle their uh, uh, how they handle yeah. their uh, transactions and resell products uh, through your account. Um, they have like recently started uh, with Stripe Treasury, which is again an another new product that they br brought out, which is pretty cool. Um, so uh, Stripe really is focused on mm -hmm. like giving you lots and lots of tooling around uh, the products, uh, around the problems that you want to solve. While Paddle is really focused on giving you uh, a complete solution around um, the way they see sense. how billing should uh, be handled. <laughs> I know that Paddle is also like um, uh, interested in uh, uh, like expanding their API a lot more to uh, like come come with uh, new solutions for uh, developers oh, cool. so i think we can see definitely see some improvements uh on the pedal side of things uh um soon um so yeah it's it's not that easy totally though. Fine. um i can't really yeah. answer that question okay. it's something you need to decide well i know uh, i've for, kind of like diverged yourself. away from yeah. our normal yeah. topics let's go back and we just say so uh, one of the things i would like to talk about with each, each package is, is can you just walk us through a little bit what the installation process is like what are their step what are some important steps or are there any important dependencies we should talk about definitely um so for both packages it's Pretty simple, mm -hmm. actually. It's a composer require a way that you need to do. Um, uh, the only main setup part, I guess, lives in setting mm -hmm. up the Stripe or Paddle accounts themselves. Uh, so Stripe has uh, mm -hmm. both Stripe and Paddle have test moduses uh, to test around, uh, so yeah. you don't need to work with any real money related uh, stuff. Uh, in Stripe, it's called just called test test mode mm -hmm. from your dashboard, and in Paddle, it's called the sandbox, uh, which you can set up. Uh, you need to install the API keys to know how cashier mm -hmm. needs to talk to which account in Stripe or which account in, in Paddle. And after you're done with that, you can deploy to production with production keys, and like everything should work. Uh, as it worked in the testing environment. There are some important other steps that you need to take into account for both cashier, battle and cashier mm -hmm. stripe. It's important to set up the webhooks because a lot of operations that are made with cashier are asynchronous. So we're, that basically means that like whenever you do something with cashier, it sends out a request to Stripe or Paddle and Paddle and Stripe will resolve that request in the background and send you back a response yeah. through the webhook, not directly because the handling of uh, money uh, based um, mm -hmm. operations can take a while depending on what sort of action needs to be taken. If you're talking to a bank directly or if you're talking to a card provider or, or something, that can take a while. So the webhooks are basically a means to an end to receive that response from Stripe or paddle when right. you're already left the session of the first uh, operation. <coughs> we could yeah. almost so that's important okay. to take into account. Yeah, I was you also say you have... can almost see the, yeah, the, the API sorry. calls yeah. that we're making up to them as like queued jobs, basically. So we tend to think of things as you call an API and you get the response back. So we should see these as more. You call the API to queue up something, which means all they're going to say is, "Yep, queued, cool." So the webhooks are the way they eventually asynchronous, like a JavaScript promise type situation, mm -hmm. call back and be like, "Okay, cool. Now, now here's your answer." So you got to be ready to receive those messages even when it's not in that that immediate call response, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, 
not always that kind mm -hmm. of case. It's more oh. with battle uh, the case uh, in that because like they use a, a widget to uh, render um, a UI on top of your application that basically handles mm -hmm. the way you start a subscription. Um, so it's, uh, it's again, like a very locked in way of doing things because you have one single U UI to do that, that's rendered. Mm -hmm. And the webhook that comes in basically resolves how the subscription is started or updated. Well, with Stripe, it's more, yep, definitely. it's sometimes more of a synchronous process. So you do get responses back from the API directly you can build up your UI however you want. So you can totally, you have total freedom uh, of how you want to build your UI or your checkout process. And you do get those synchronous responses back. But uh, in, like I said, in the background, Stripe is still doing some processes uh, whenever you yep. do an operation. So you do still need those webhooks to make sure that the data from whatever storage you're using, yeah. whether a database or something else. Yeah, is kept the, I think the main circumstances in which yeah. I've seen webhooks coming back from Stripe are things like things that happen outside of the immediate action of the user on my website. Right? Anything that is happening outside of that context, whether it's a, you know, a monthly billing. Well, what happens if they do a monthly bill and the credit card? you know, doesn't go through or something like that. The webhooks are very helpful for things that are happening outside of the immediate action mm -hmm. of my users on my website. Cool. Um, I interrupted you in, exactly. in the middle of me having asked you the question about, are there any setup steps or dependencies? Is there anything else you wanted to share about what it looks like to set up your Stripe account or your Paddle account to be ready to work with cashier? Yeah, uh, like depending on whichever services uh, you need, there are a couple of steps that you need. Uh, Stripe with Stripe, mm -hmm. it's the case that you need to set up your products. So you, if you're using a subscription based model, you're gonna like have to define the prices you want to set for your application. So to have a very practical example for chess, like uh, a couple of plans, let's say basic, uh, premium and enterprise and, uh, you take like a basic month, a monthly price for a single, uh, type of price, uh, type of product. And then you take a different product. That's uh, a gotcha that often people uh, misunderstand. Products in Stripe aren't the same as mm -hmm. like the, like uh, for example, Forge. It's like mm -hmm. Forge Basic. That's a product in uh, in Stripe. So that specific tier of uh, that you're uh, that you're on, and within that product, so within right. Forge right. Basic, you can define mm -hmm. a monthly and a yearly price that you can switch to. And that makes it very easy to do checks on the um, app side of things. So you can know to right. which product your uh, subscriber is subscribed to, and you can see like, yeah. oh, they're subscribed to a basic plan. And you can see like, okay. And whenever that interval changes, like whether right. it's monthly they're or They're still in the yearly, same product. That doesn't really matter. Like uh, the application <coughs> won't, exactly, it's still the same product. And then when you switch to, for example, the mm -hmm. premium mm -hmm. uh, plan, that's a different uh, product in, in Stripe. But what people uh, often do, what I see, and which is confusing a little bit, I have to admit, is that they define like both like oh, a basic plan yeah. and an enterprise plan uh -huh. on the same product, and they just make the switches to that. And um, that's like a little bit confusing to Stripe it's, it's itself because the, the numbers mm -hmm. won't like properly uh, match up to what uh, what product you're on. And it makes the checking also a little bit hard in the application side of yeah. things. So that's like a gotcha that you need to understand. So to round up, like you set up your products, um, you define mm -hmm. the identifiers in a config file for yourself. If you're using Spark, for example, we have a config file for you where you can do that. So you can just define the products in the config file from Spark. Cashier doesn't really have that because Cashier is more meant like a tooling box for you to build your application. So you, mm -hmm. if you're just using Cashier, you still need to do that yourself. But Spark has that defined uh, beforehand uh, before you. So they, the products mm -hmm. end up very nicely in the UI uh, as well uh, and such. Um, for Paddle, it's a little bit different. Uh, they also use uh, this product kind of uh, thing to define. But in Paddle, you define a product with a price and you can find a monthly or yearly price for that product. Oh, okay. And you hmm. can also define different currencies uh, for that uh, product. So Paddle is really focused uh, on uh, making it very hmm. easy to hmm. switch uh, different prices, different currencies in different <laughs> countries. You have this uh, purchasing yeah. power. Um, 
parity hmm. power uh, yeah, uh, thing going on. And uh, through their widget, they make it very hmm. easily to detect in which country you are. And based on that, it will cool. show the, the correct currency for your product. So you can, for example, set a lower price for uh, a certain um, wow. a product in a different yeah. uh, country. I didn't know they did that. Which is uh, a awesome. very nice uh, um, uh, feature. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, works uh, very well. Um, but like setting up the products in mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. Stripe and Paddle is probably the most amount of work uh, you need to do. When That's setting helpful. Up a and new it's funny because share application. Uh, Cashier makes everything so easy that sometimes when I have to do that part, I go, "Oh, right, there's actually work <laughs> I have to do here." <laughs> like I, th I just thought it's going to ma magically make everything work for me. So that makes sense. Um. All right, so yeah. uh, we know mm -hmm. the basics of what you do with these. Um, you know, let's say I, I'm creating something Forge, a user signs up, uh, I can put them in a trial, I can put in their credit card information, I can say they're subscribed to this version. And then later also I can ask questions. I can say, is user subscribed to this version? If so, show them this user interface. If they're subscribed to this, show them that. So it's like the basics of subscription management. It also gives you things like being able to cancel the plans or change the plans. Are there any other kind of like cool aspects of what it offers to you <laughs> that it's worth like talking about that maybe are a little bit less, excuse me. <clears throat> are there any other parts of what um, Stripe off or sorry, what cashier offers you that are outside of just this main thing of just like subscribe to subscription, change the frequency, change the, the, the project that you're, or the, the product that you're on, cancel, edit your credit card information. Are there any other things that either um, everybody uses, but we don't talk about as much or any other lesser used features or anything like that that are worth talking about? Yeah, uh, like uh, Stripe, for example, has been doing very well r lately with um, mm -hmm. creating their checkout and their billing portal solutions, which are basically predefined UIs on, the, on their own. And it gives you like a very mm -hmm. easy way to set up a checkout flow uh, for your application. So uh, the checkout uh, product that they offer is Stripe basically checkout, yeah. what, what the product is called. It's a checkout process for, for your products. And you can very um, uh, much mm. customize uh, that experience to, towards your user. And Cashier offers a very easy way to integrate with that. Uh, like the way I've tried to design it is to just make it uh, a fluent syntax mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. top of like the syntax we already had to, for starting uh, subscriptions. So basically, instead of like calling the API to start a subscription with a new subscription okay. create, you do new subscription checkout. And that will uh, redirect you through a checkout, mm. a Stripe checkout process, and you'll see the UI uh, in front of you. You can totally customize that in whatever language, whatever like imagery you want, uh, different colors and whatnot. You can collect information for your customer, like the, their address if you need to ship them anything, or like ask them mm -hmm. for tax information, like their uh, FAT number or or whatever. Uh, that's pretty powerful i think like if, if anyone wants to start out with cashier stripe and wants to have like in most the most easy way to start out with anything in cashier i would recommend to yeah. check into the checkout uh, product by uh, by stripe you also have um different uh, features in cashier which aren't used much but they are there if you want them S uh, stripe also have uh, has a way for example to do uh, meter billing which is basically like for example if you use um an mm -hmm. email uh, service like Mailgun or anything, they charge you yeah. with how much emails you, you send uh, each month. Oh, cool. And that's I also something that. you can do with Cashier if you want to do <laughs> that kind of a service. Yeah, it's pretty cool, actually. Mm -hmm. um, Paddle has the same thing, actually. It's a little bit, it works a little bit different, but mm -hmm. that's also like the thing that we're trying to solve with Cashier. Like mm -hmm. Stripe and Paddle work in different ways that with these kind of things and we're trying to make that as uniform as possible and as easy as possible for people to understand so yeah, they makes don't sense. really need to dig into the apis uh, them, themselves yeah uh, i already mentioned one cool feature uh, in yeah. battle which is the purchasing power parity uh, that they have going on with the different currencies which is uh, very nice um, they also have a way to collect your email oh, okay. address uh, for mm -hmm. uh, marketing reasons, if you want that, through the widget that they show. I mm -hmm. think that Stripe also does that uh, these days uh, to allow you through the checkout process to collect your email address. Uh, cashier Stripe mm -hmm. also has, like I said, the billing portal going on, which is basically um, yeah. 
sort of like the same thing that Spark is. Like it's a yeah. way to manage your subscription, for example, if or manage your payment info, see your invoices, uh, what you have. So it's very similar to what uh, Spark uh, tries to do. Um, and yeah, like both of these services have different kind of things. Uh, Stripe has very mm -hmm. great tooling around risk fraud detection, around um, like protection all around uh, for your mm -hmm. um, for your application around risk. Um, Paddle has like a, a very um, neat way to get an overview of all of your um, transactions that you made uh, and such, which is a little, works a little bit different than in Stripe. They both have okay. their, um, that like, makes sense. um, um one other thing you hadn't mentioned was the invoices. Um, I know that Stripe at least, um, cashier Stripe allows you to basically be able to get a list of all the invoices that have ever been sent to a particular customer and then also generate individual ones. Is that something that paddle, um, offers as well? Uh, yes, they do actually. They have a list, um, uh, transactions mm -hmm. uh, option, I think, uh, API endpoints. Okay. Uh, and we do integrate with that. So that's in Kashir Paddle uh, as well. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look, I think it's uh, explained in the documentation how you can retrieve yeah. those invoices. That one, I don't know why, because all of Kashir is magic, but for some yeah. reason, the mm -hmm. fact that I can actually get those invoices generated has always felt very magical to me. So I'm very grateful for that feature. Yeah, um, like the invoices themselves are also a bit uh, interesting because they work also work a little bit different because uh, Paddle mm -hmm. is like the uh, merchant of record. Mm, the invoices are directed yeah. towards Paddle themselves. Huh. Like you don't see the tax information from your uh, own account on those invoices. I think you do see some contact info and something, Very but interesting. the fat number is uh, from Paddle itself. So it's a transaction between hmm. your customer and Paddle and not yourself. You're being paid yeah. uh, by Paddle for your income monthly or, or something, and they deduct a fee for the service they charge. And um, that's the way how that thing works. But uh, if you look at the Stripe invoices themselves or the Stripe receipts, it's a direct transaction between uh, Stripe Very interesting. and your uh, between yourself and your customer, and you see your invoicing and tax uh, information on the receipt, and the invoicing and tax Very information on uh, of the customer. You do have a little bit more um, things you need to do on the Stripe side of things. You need to make sure that your customer's address is filled in correctly because uh, you're talking to API mm -hmm. endpoints. So mm -hmm. you need to send that data yourself towards the towards Stripe while Paddle oh, uses okay. their widget to it's collect all of that data. So yeah. okay. you don't mm, need to do that here. yourself if you use um, uh, Paddle. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I know we're kind of running a little bit longer than we originally planned, but do you, can you talk to me a little bit about the, the roadmap you have for Cashier? What things are kind of coming next? Yeah, um, I guess like a cashier mostly mm -hmm. now is um, mostly finished, like on both sides. I, I don't have much big things planned for cashier um, right now. But uh, the thing with Stripe and Paddle is that they're businesses of their own and they're constantly evolving. So new things uh, for mm -hmm. Paddle and uh, Stripe will come out. Uh, that's a given, and we need to keep up with, with those uh, things, of course. For Paddle, I'm looking very much forward to um, mm -hmm. a new API, maybe, in the future, so we can uh, integrate with uh, with it and do a little bit more, talk, uh, do a little bit more uh, feature things uh, with Paddle. For Stripe, it's um, mm -hmm. looking at new features that they are going to implement at uh, their platform to integrate with. I want to do like a little bit uh, better APIs in cashier Stripe okay. for coupon handling because that's a little bit fuzzy right now. Uh, I've worked with coupon handling myself mm -hmm. through cashier Stripe and I wasn't very happy with how, how it worked right now. So I think I'm going to oh. try to do something better uh, there. At some points, maybe in the future, if if I can, I'm not sure if it's going to land in cashier and, or in something uh, else. I really want to integrate oh, with their cool. um, a Stripe Connect product because that's still... Yeah, it's it's such a great product that they're offering. It's such a powerful um, thing that they're offering, but it will be quite a bit of work to really look at like all the gotchas with it, like how it would integrate. I'm not sure if Cashier Stripe is the mm -hmm. correct place for it, or it should be a different kind of package. That's still something I need to figure out. Uh, but at some point, I really I want that. to I take an a better look at that and uh, uh, using set it that, up. that yeah. I maintain mm -hmm. on my own. 
and it's it's uh it's easier with cashier stripe there um but it's still a lot of work so that is something where if you did that work you'd make my life a lot easier so mm-hmm. um so to to wrap it up before i yeah. ask well, actually no let's say would you like to request any help or support i understand this is a little bit different than some of the other packages because with other packages they might say yeah pull request this stuff whereas you have like the you know you have this is your job but still are there any whether it's maybe not coding help but any other kind of input you'd like for people or anything like that is there any way people can support or help kind of what you're doing in cashier that would make your job easier there Well, um, of -hmm. course, support on the issue tracker is always appreciated if bugs are reported, uh, if anyone can send them pull requests uh, for that. It's been quite quiet on uh, the cashier uh, repos lately because not much has really been going on. So in terms of that, like traffic has been a little bit low, but that's good, of course. It means that the package is pretty (laughs) stable. Yeah. Uh, um, so mm-hmm. great ideas for cashier are always appreciated. Just give me a shout out on Twitter if you uh, have an idea or anything. Um, and in terms of that, yeah, um, just keep an eye on the issue tracker. Feel free to help out I love with it. stuff. Good um, that's always um, very much And if anybody yeah, uh, wants to get in touch with you about those sorts of things, you mentioned your, your Twitter. So everybody, his Twitter will be linked in the show notes. And then, of course, we'll put a link to the, the, the GitHub repo on the show notes. I guess that's actually it. That's the best way to get in touch with you. So before mm-hmm. we wrap for today, is there anything you wish that we had had a chance to cover about cashier that we didn't? Um, not much. I think we, we covered the uh, awesome. Almost, uh, everything well, thank you for joining uh, me today. Thank you for about. the work you've thank done you. in cashier. Yeah, yeah. I, again, I know that Taylor originally wrote Laravel and we're all grateful to Taylor for that. So Taylor, thank you for that. Um, but Dries, thanks for keeping it going. And just a quick note for anybody who has not followed me on Twitter. Um, Dries, one of the things that Therese does is goes to all the open source repositories in the Laravel world and manages their issues and their pull requests and stuff like that. And the amount you have saved my bot on Valet, I cannot, I will, I will forever be in your debt for the <laughs> the ways you've made my life better. So I just want to publicly extend a thank you to you um, for Valet and just for everything you're doing for all these other repos. The, the Laravel open source world would not be the same if you were not doing the, the tireless work that you're doing. So thank you so much, man. Thanks uh, for mentioning that. I really appreciate it. And uh, you're very welcome. I really like, I really love um, doing this. That's uh, awesome. This kind of work. Well, thank so you for joining with, today with and I um, really appreciate you. And we look forward to see what you're going to do with cashier next time. All right. See you all next time. Cool. See you around, man. Mm-hmm.